Okay, so this is going to be section 2.4 of my pre-algebra series, and this is going to be the section called problem solving. So what we'll do is we'll talk about solving an equation for a variable. We'll solve, uh, we'll isolate different variables depending on either what's requested or the situation at hand. We'll solve applications involving variables. We've been learning about techniques to solve linear equations. Well, now we want to uh, come up with some real life situations where we would encounter linear equations that we need to solve to get some useful information. And lastly, we want to be able to translate phrases into equations. And again, in real life, when we start with these word problems, typically it does, right? It starts with a phrase in whatever language you speak. So for me, I have to take my English phrases, translate those into equations, and then use my techniques to solve those. And a lot of times, translating phrases into equations, that can actually be the tricky part. So let's just look at some examples here. Okay, so a little terminology here to begin with, and I'm going to start off here. We're just going to look at the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, and recall the perimeter is just the distance around the object. So if I label this W and this L, I would have another W here and another length of L there, and if I add all of those together, I would get that the perimeter equals W plus W, or 2W plus L plus L, so I would get that the perimeter equals 2w plus 2l. Now, notice this equation's got more than two variables. We've got this p, this w, and this l. We have, quote-unquote, many variables. This is what's known as a literal equation. And at least in my experience, I don't remember too often running into situations where they were like, hey, this is a literal equation. So I don't think this terminology is going to be that important, but hey, just be aware of it, but I don't think you'll encounter it that often. Okay, let's talk about solving for variables. So I'm going to take my perimeter formula, and I'm going to solve for W in part A, and I'm going to solve for L in part B. And you'll see that they're very similar, at least in this case. Now, when we want to solve for a variable, in this case W, I want to get that variable isolated. So eventually, I want to come down to an equation that says W equals, and then I've got something on the other side of the equ equation. The thing that's important to me is I want no Ws over there. As long as there's no Ws over there, I am perfect. So it just says we have to get the W isolated. So what I do is I look at my equation, and <clears throat> I look at each term. So there's no Ws on the left, just that term involving P. I see this term 2W on the right, okay, but then I see this term uh, 2L on the right that doesn't have a W. So I'm going to move that 2L over. Well, since I'm adding 2L to both sides, what I could do is subtract 2L from both sides. And that's going to give me P minus 2L equals 2W. And now we can use the techniques that we've seen. So since I'm multiplying my W by 2, I would simply uh, divide both sides of my equation by 2 or equivalently multiply both sides by one half. And maybe I'll write one out here, but in general, I'm gonna go through these a little faster. So P, that's P over one, and then we had minus 2L. That's the same thing as 2L over one. Now, when we distribute, right, so one times P, that's gonna give me P in the numerator. Two times one is gonna give me two in the denominator. And then I would have to distribute that one half to that, I would have to distribute that one half to that other, that other term in that parentheses. So a positive times a negative is a negative. One times two l is two l, and the denominator we have we would have two times one, which is two. But notice we could cancel those twos out, and really that's just going to leave us with minus l. Now on the right side, well, two times a half. That's just going to be 1, W, and we've got our solution. We have now solved for W. And notice I've got W all by itself. There's other stuff on the other side, but there's no Ws, so I'm, I'm happy. <clears throat> well, to solve for L, we would do the, you know, the same approach. Okay, so the only place I see an L is on the right. So I want to get rid of this 2W that's over there. So what I would do is simply subtract 2w from both sides. 
And again, uh, let's make that a little better. <clears throat> and again, since we're multiplying by two, I would simply divide both sides by two or equivalently multiply by one half. And in much the same way, when we distribute, we would be left with P over two minus W equals L. And again, we've now solved for L. So let's look at another example here. So here I have that S equals two pi R squared plus two pi R times H. We wanna solve for H. Again, same idea. There's no H on this term on the left, okay? I see two terms on the right. The first one has no H. The second one does have an H. So I'm going to leave that uh, term involving H, I'm gonna leave that alone, and I'm gonna move this two pi R squared over to the left side. And I'm gonna do that by subtracting. So I would have S minus two pi times R squared equals two pi, two times pi times R times H. <clears throat> okay, we want to get the H all by itself. So think about this two pi R, think about that as being the constant that you're multiplying by. So what we're gonna do is to get rid of it, I'm going to divide both sides by it. Well, dividing by two pi R is equivalent to multiplying by one over two times pi times R. And then I would have to do that to the right side as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, the left side, I keep saying that. We would have to do it to the left side as well. Okay, so if I distribute, I would get S over two times pi times R when I distribute, minus, okay, I would have two times pi times R squared all over two times pi times R. So I'm just distributing to that second term. Now on the right, the twos cancel, the pi's cancel, the r's cancel. That's the whole reason why we multiplied by that, was just to get that h all by itself. Now on the left, there's really nothing to simplify in that first term. On the right, the twos cancel, the pi's cancel. We would be left with r squared over r, but r squared over r, that's the same thing as just r. So my second term, I'm just gonna be left with minus R equals H. And again, we have now solved for H. Okay, so let's see here, a couple more. <clears throat> so here, we've got A, the area equals one half, little h times this quantity, capital B plus little b. And again, a couple examples. Part A will solve for H, and part B we will solve for little b. <clears throat> All right, so what are we gonna do here? So I'm multiplying, I've got this one half, I've got this quantity B plus B, and then I see my H. Now I wanna get the H by itself, which means I need to get rid of that, the one half and the quantity B plus B. So the way that I would do that, let me give myself a little more space here. I'm either just multiplying or dividing by what I don't want to be there, is, is what I'm thinking. I don't want the one half to be there. So I would multiply both sides by two. And since I'm multiplying by this quantity B plus B, I'm going to divide by that quantity B plus B. And that's what I'm gonna multiply both sides of my equation by. And notice if I take two times one, that's just gonna give me my two. So on the left side, there's not a lot to do. That's two times capital A over capital B plus little b. And notice on the right side, again, the one half and the two are gone. That's what we wanted. This quantity B plus B is gonna get canceled with this quantity B plus B. <clears throat> and then we're just simply left with H and that's what we wanted. Okay, so let's look at one more of these. Okay, so in the next one, we wanna solve for little b. So I wanna get this little b all by itself. Well, what can we start getting rid of on the right side? Well, let's see. A couple things I could get rid of. To get rid of that one half, I could multiply by two. And to get rid of the h, I could multiply by one over h. So I would have to do that to the left side as well. Now on the left, again, this is two over one times one over h times a over one. That's what all of this really says. So you're gonna get two times a in the numerator 
and just h in the denominator. So that's going to be 2 times a over h. Now on the right side, the 1 half and the 2 cancel, the h and the 1 over h cancel. That's just going to leave me with b plus b. Notice I've put it in parentheses, but really there's just a 1 here. And if I distribute that 1, I'm just going to be left with what is inside the parentheses. So I'm just going to be left with capital B plus little b. And if I want to solve for little b, well, I want to get rid of capital B, so I'm going to subtract that from both sides. All right, and we have now got it. So again, the thing that's a little bit different in that example is, hey, we've got this stuff in parentheses that we have to maybe take an extra step or two to deal with. Okay, let's try to set up some examples, and uh, maybe I can work all the way through them, or maybe we'll, we'll at least get them going. <clears throat> okay, so this is a very applica applicable situation. Uh, money, right? This is something that, that finances, this is done day in, day out. So if one invests P dollars, that's your principal, that's what you start with, and earns simple interest at a rate R for T years, so maybe you earn 10% per year, 20% per year. The total amount after T years, it says the total amount is going to be, it's the principal you started with, plus we'll take the principal times the rate times the time. This second part just amounts the, represents the amount of interest you've earned. So we'll take the amount of interest we've earned, plus our original amount that we started with, that's going to give us our total amount. Okay, part A, we want to solve for T. Well, let's do that. If we solve for T, the only place I see a T is in this second term on the right side. So I could subtract capital P from both sides. And now if I want to solve for T, again, I think, well, I'm multiplying by P times R. I'm going to divide by P times R. Well, if I do it on the left, I have to do it on the right. And if I distribute, I would have A over P times R minus capital P over P times R. But notice those P's would cancel. And that's just going to leave me with 1 over R. Now on the right side, the P and the P cancel, the R and the R cancel, and we're simply left with T. So we've now solved for T. So part B says, okay, so if the total amount of money that we end up with is 2000 if the principal we start with is $1,000, and you're earning an interest rate of 0 0.08, or 8% per year, we want to find T and interpret that. Okay, so we want to find T. So I'm just taking this equation that I just found, and I'm, again, I'm going to put the T first. And it says we have A. That's going to be 2,000. So I'm just reordering this. T equals A over P times R minus 1 over R. I'm just reordering this. And now I'm filling in those values. So it says P, that's going to be equal to 1,000. Um, that's being multiplied by, by R, which is 0 0.08 minus 1 over 0, uh, excuse me, point zero 0.08. It says that's going to be our value for t. And notice we could simplify 2,000 over 1,000. That's just 2 divided by point zero 0.08 minus 1 over point zero 0.08. And I'm going to let you simplify this. So just put into a calculator is what I would do. I don't know. Let's go ahead and do it. Why not? I always say this. So let's see. 2 divided by 0 0.08. That's going to be 25 minus, let's see, so 1 divided by 0 0.08. That's just 12.5. 25 minus 12.5. That's going to be 12.5. So it says T equals 12.5. 12.5 what? This is the interpretation. So it says it's going to take 12.5 years to earn $2,000, because that's how much we wanted to finish with. It's going to take 12.5 years to earn $2,000. If we start with $1,000, and we earn 
8% interest, I should say simple interest, per year. Okay, that's what this that's that's what this number means. So we've solved for t. It has something to do with time. Well, it tells us how long it's going to take uh, to satisfy all of these other restrictions. We want the final amount to be two thousand. We start with a thousand, and we're getting eight percent per year. That's what it tells us. Let's just set up a couple more examples here. I'll let you finish these off. It says the sum of two odd integers is 84. What are the integers? Now, of course, you could just start guessing and checking and probably coming up with these, but the point is try to take these English phrases and write these in some sort of mathematical term because eventually you're going to get to some situation that's too complicated just to you know guess and check. So let's think about our, um, our consecutive odd integers. So I want to write things generically because I don't, I don't know what these odd integers are. So let me think about numbers in a, a, a row, right? I could write one, two, three, four. Those, those are consecutive numbers. They're not odd. So let me, but let me try to think about this a little more generically, right? Those are consecutive odd integers, one, three, five, seven. How can I write this generically? So the idea is if I start with some number x, you know, the next number, well, would be x plus 1. You add to it. And then to get to the next number, we would have x plus 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's assume that this number, let's assume that this one, this number's odd. If that one's odd, that means this number is also odd. And those are going to be consecutive, right? Those are odd numbers that fall one after the other. So now we're going to come up with our equation. It says the sum of two odd integers. So one odd integer is x. If we add that other odd integer, which is x plus 2, it says that has to equal 84. And now we would simply just solve this equation. Notice we have x plus x, which is going to be 2x plus 2 equals 84. And I'll leave this for you to solve. And once you know that, it's going to tell you one of the odd integers. And then you could add 2 to that one to get the other odd integer. So that would be our solution. So in this question, we've got three consecutive numbers that add up to 72. And we want to know what are the three numbers. So this is very similar to the last question. Two differences. Now we have three numbers. And notice they're consecutive, right? They're not even or odd like the last one. The last one had to do with odd. Well, if my first number is x, my next number would be x plus 1. Well, my next number would be x plus 2. Those would be three consecutive numbers. Well, to come up with my equation, it says if we add those three numbers together, so I'll take x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2, and we know if we add those all together, we get 72. Now, again, I know this question, you could just really guess and check and come up with these numbers, but the point is learning these techniques to go from phrases to mathematics because you eventually you will certainly encounter situations where you can't just guess and check you have to produce the equations grind through them come up with a solution okay so on the left we could get rid of parentheses combine like terms we would have x plus x plus x which is 3x 1 plus 2 is 3 that equals 72 we can subtract 3 from both sides we'll get 3x 72 minus 3 is 69 if we divide 69 divided by 3, that's going to be 23. So now it says that the numbers, right, we always have to be careful because if we just stop here and we say, well, x equals 23, that doesn't tell me the three numbers. You're almost there, right? It says the smallest number is 23. The next number must be 24. And then the last number must be 25. And you can add those up and verify, hey, we do get um, that those add up to 72. Okay, last example. So you've got to pay three employees. So it says the second employee worked five hours more than the first. We don't know how many hours the first person worked. And the third employee worked twice as many uh, as the second. Okay. So all together, they worked 55 hours. And we want to know if each employee earns $12 an hour, how much does each, each person earn? So to me, really, the question is how many hours... 
you know, how many hours did each work? At least I should say, to me, that's kind of the hard part. Because once I know how many hours each person worked, I can just multiply that by 12. So let's see. There's employee 1, there's employee 2, there's employee 3. And this is going to represent the number of hours worked. Okay, I don't know how many hours the first person worked, so I'm just going to label it something generic. I'm going to label it as X. Well, I know that the, the, the second employee worked five more hours than the first. Well, I would just add five to the number of hours of employee one to get the number of hours of employee two. And then it says the third employee worked twice as much as the second. Well, we would have to take the number of hours that the second employee worked and we would have to double that. Be careful, make sure that you do put that x plus five in parentheses because if you don't distribute the two, um, you'll have a problem. Well, we know that the total hours worked is 55, so I could simply take x plus x plus five plus two times x plus five, and we know that has to equal 55. So again, I've kind of gone from the English now to the 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 mathematical equation that I have to solve. So now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in the world of mathematics. How do we solve this? Well, I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. So I've got x plus x plus 5. Now, notice on this third term on the left, we have to distribute the 2. So we'll have 2x, 2 times 5 is 10. On the left side, if we combine our like terms, x plus x plus 2x, that's going to be 4x. And then the 5 and the uh, 10, that's going to be 15. Well, I can subtract 15 from both sides. 55 minus 15 is 40. And then 40 divided by 4, that's going to be x equals 10. So now that tells me that the number of hours worked. So that tells me that the number of hours worked. Okay, we said that the first person worked 10 hours because that's what x equals. Well, that means that the next person worked 15 hours because they worked five more. And the last person, well, we double it, that person worked uh, 30 hours. And that simply means, right, the earnings, we'll say person one, two, three, All right? We've now really done the hard part. We'll just take uh, $12 because that's how much each person works. And then we'll just multiply that by the number of hours they worked, which we said was 10, 15, and 30, respectively. 10, 15, and 30. So employee one made $120. Employee two made, uh, what is that? Um, 100, let's see, we said five more hours, $180. And there we go. And then the last person, uh, made $360. All right, so again, just a few examples here. Um, being able to solve for equations, or excuse being able to take equations and solving for variables, very important. Being able to interpret, very important. And then just, again, being able to take these real-life situations. I see this all the time. You know, this is an algebra course, but even when people get into, say, calculus or further down the road, you'll encounter these word problems and the place where people get stuck, they get more often than not, they get stuck producing the equations they have to solve. After that, you're kind of just off and running and applying these techniques. Once you get familiar with them, you'll say, oh, those aren't too bad. So coming up with the equations is tricky. So again, when you see these problems, maybe some of, the, some of them are basic, please do try to write them out because that skill will come in extremely, extremely useful um, down the road. It's something that you'll have to have in your in your toolkit. All right. Well, once again, I do hope this helps and good luck, my friends.